episode of Video Game Logic. Today's show was recorded on September the 26th, 2018. I'm your host, Gaming Psychologist, and with me, as always, my superhero alter ego, Caffeine Rage. Uh, I'm glad I'm not just the, sta- the sidekick. Nah, you're a little better than that, buddy. On today's show, we will be going through our September Game Club, which is the Awesome Adventures of Captain Spirit. We will remind you about what the October Game Club is going to be, and we'll be discussing one piece of news. Telltale Games is canceled mid-season as the studio shuts down. Timestamps will be in the show notes following their respective topics. Hello, Rach. How are you? Hello. I'm all right. Uh, it's uh, been an uh, interesting day, mostly just because it's been threatening to rain all day, and it's been dark and gloomy and blah here. Yep. And it has been raining here all day, and yesterday, and the day before. I'm actually under a flash flood warning right now, although my house is on a hill, so it'll have to flood really hard for me to uh, to wash away. But it might rain hard enough for my power to go out again. Uh, yeah. Eagle-eared listeners will have noticed that we only read off three things, and also that the date is for Wednesday instead of Tuesday. We were going to record last night. We had everything ready. We were literally about to start. And then my power went out. And it was out for like two and a half or three hours. So, yay to that. Uh, are I can Eagles only assume... done for their sense of hearing? No, they're not. But I just said that to be, I don't know, silly. Oh. But, uh, yeah, I can only assume that there was a, a traffic accident or a tree that fell over on a power line or something. Um, I mean, it was raining very hard, but there was nothing except rain. Like, there's not really any wind. This is just rain that's been sitting on us for, at this point, three days now. We've had something like nine or ten inches of rain dumped on us in the last 48 hours. I I, I was driving home today and looking uh, out the window, and I was, I was thinking to myself, hmm, there used to be land there, but now there's a lake. <laughs> Well, it's so bad there's standing water on the interstate between Dayton and Chattanooga. So you're go- not so you're definitely going to have to invest in an amphibious car before too long. I will, yeah. Uh, basically, if it rains all night tonight like it's supposed to, which there's a little bit of a break right now, but it's supposed to start raining again in the next hour, I'm just I'm not going to go to work tomorrow. I was actually worried about getting home from work today because I, I live down, you know, take a left at this back road and then a right at that back road and then a left and then there's my neighborhood uh which is like i said up on top of a hill so no worries about the house getting washed away but uh the roads are another story and there was a good like 10 or 11 inches worth of of fast flowing water across the only way to get to my house so yeah probably not uh, smart to drive across that no I was like, well, I'll risk it to get home, but I'm not going to risk it to go back to work tomorrow. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I- I'd like to say that my experience with uh, spin tires fording those rivers has helped, uh, but, but it's not really. With your experience the- in the water and spin tires, I would hope not. Yeah, it's just it was shallow enough that I didn't have to worry about it, but a few more inches and that's enough to... Uh, lift the car, the car away. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, what's interesting is, uh, well, this has been posted on the internet several times, but uh, Arizona actually has a thing where if you're, if you drive around barriers in uh, flash or, or in flooded roads and have to get rescued, you pay for the rescue uh, cost. Actually, that's a good idea. I like that. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. And a big fucking bill. Indeed. Um, But yeah, there's lots of roads that are closed here. I was driving, again, driving home this afternoon, and I was was looking, and there must have been at least two dozen road closure signs I could see from the highway. So, there's a school was let out early today, and there's school canceled tomorrow, just because the chances for floods are so high. And there have been some areas that are flooding around here. The lower areas are places that have, like, lakes and things. Um, I I mean, Dayton has a lake, but we're very far away from it. Well, now it has two. um, Yeah. And some uh, water rapids and 
you know, a couple of rivers, a couple of extra rivers. <laughs> the, uh, the Tennessee river flows past here. Like I'm just a, a, a quick, quick drive or a, a short walk or I guess a medium sized walk away from the Tennessee river. So a, a long mosey for me. Yeah. A long mosey. There's a, a runoff Creek that runs behind my house and normally it's, it's empty. And then when it rains really hard, there'll be water flowing down it, but there's so much water in it that I can like look down uh, out the back window and I can see the water at the edge of my backyard. Yeah. That's not a good sign. Negative. Nope. It's not. Yeah. It used to be where I lived. Uh, uh, the Creek uh, was uh, in that, like a, I want to say like a 10 foot channel, you know, just it's dug out over the years. Whenever I would be able to look outside my bedroom window and see the Creek, that's a bad time. Yeah. Now, thankfully, that's about, oh, 25 or 30 feet down a hill. So, not worried about it washing my house away. But, yeah, I, I've never seen it that bad since I've lived here. Which, granted, that's only been for yeah, I was a about year to and a say. half at this point. But, I mean, we have gotten a lot of rain this summer and last year. And, yeah, I only saw it, you know, a couple of times actually get full. But this is a new level of full. So, yeah, I guess that's enough about the local weather, I suppose. Um, what point was I trying to make before? Oh, yeah. So I, was I don't know. I've been wondering that a... uh, for many of you now. Because, <laughs> because of what, you know, because of last night, we're only doing a short episode because I still want to play Star Wars RPG tonight because we haven't got to play for a while. So we're going to do that And plus, later. since we are recording on off night. We get to uh, celebrate a very special birthday. We do? Yes. Uh, there's an item on our docket that is literally from a year ago. Today. Oh, hey, it is. <laughs> I noticed that yeah, whenever I, should... I was uh, putting all the notes together. <laughs> I should just delete that. I've never gotten around to reading it. I'm never going to. Yeah, it was just a study uh, uh, talking about how piracy actually increases legitimate sales of video games, according to an EU or Commons report. And we had that from nine twenty six seventeen. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to delete that I, right now. I just thought it was funny. <laughs> we we had it on there for ages for you to go through the report because that's your thing. Yeah, but let's be honest. At this point, I'm never going to get around to it. So, well, we, well, we should have known that in the very beginning, you know, because that's a, quite the long report. Yeah, it was three hundred something pages, if I remember correctly. But uh, I guess the one other thing I should mention is that uh, this is the first podcast post Kyle's wedding, um, and yeah, I met up congrats. there. Yep, congratulations! Although I I saw you there, I grabbed your butt. We uh, did a few things, but no, I met up there with Kyle and Mel's, Poor and Mel's. Cube, and Ghost Shark, and Spaceman. And we had a we had a grand old time. I've got some more pictures. I posted a few in the Discord channel, like just some that didn't require any editing at all. Yeah, um, we're gonna have to make it not safe for work uh, channel. For you to post. <laughs> no, the nothing like that. Nothing like that. I've got a couple of short videos I need to upload um, that I took during the ceremony and stuff, just so that people who want to check it out can. Um, but I haven't really had a chance since I've gotten back. I got home and Katie was sick and King was sick and. Well, he wasn't really sick. He was getting over being sick. And then I had to go back to work and stuff. I'll get to it eventually. It'll be maybe, a nice uh, first anniversary present. Yeah, there we go. So uh, we had a blast. Um, played some games. Uh, so the, they had a few drinks. Cube and I didn't drink at all on the trip. Um, Just chatted a whole lot. It was a good time. Played Garbage Day. Going all the way back to the Kerbal Cast, and then I enjoyed it so much I bought Garbage Day. <laughs> it came today. Katie and I also played today's one Garbage game. Day. See, for me it was Laundry Day. <laughs> but uh, Garbage Day is Mondays. Garbage Day here is Tuesdays. Well, actually, I just have a uh, dumpster uh, out. Uh, at the end of the apartment or complex, uh, I could just dump anything in any time. But uh, they pick it up on Mondays, usually. Yeah, Tuesday's usually trash pickup for, for me. But anyways, yeah, we had a good time. 
I drove uh, 10 hours each way. Stayed at a nice hotel. Which, for a Holiday Inn Express, that was a really nice hotel. Like, most Holiday Inn Expresses are, you know, pretty pretty okay. You know, they're a safe bet whenever you go somewhere to get, like, a, a decent hotel. But this one was actually really nice, as far as that goes. But, I mean, I don't, I don't really have too much to say about it right now. Just a lot of sitting around talking, getting to know one another. Going out to dinner, stuff like that. It was a it was a great date. It was an awesome foursome we had. Wink. Poor Kyle. And you throw in Kyle and Mel's, and it's an orgy. We were the, <laughs> we were clearly the old people. Like the three of them were in are in their thirties, and even though I'm in my late twenties, I've been married for years now and have a kid that's almost five years old. So I might as well be an old guy. Uh, and we went to the. The party Kyle had Thursday night, it wasn't really a bachelor party because there were lots of people there, um, the wedding party and, and us and other friends. And like it, they were all like college age kids or they looked like kids. So you were uh, they, tempted to tell them to uh, get off your lawn? Yeah. Uh, it segregated immediately to them and us. And then, but once people started drinking and board games started being played, we, uh, we mingled and had a good time, but it was just odd. I guess I'm getting old. Also, Kyle brought out his snake and played with his snake. And you said it so, wasn't a bachelor party. It was a very small snake, actually. I didn't realize his snake was that small. Wink. And also, we freaked out Kyle's mom. <laughs> because we were, we were those people from the internet. And she was weirded out by us being there, and I think maybe a little a little afraid. But it was all right. She lived. We we as didn't far as murder. We, know. we didn't murder anyone that night. But yeah, we had a good time. So we've talked about uh, putting together or scheduling an, an a meetup um, that can include some more people. Um, make it either more centralized or. Uh, at like one of our places and just like rotate every so often whenever we do it. Um, and, you know, making sure to include like you and uh, our California folks, Jim and Phil, if they can swing it. But, I mean, this is all like very like preliminary. It would be great if we did this conversation. There is nothing planned at this point. But there might be. So just everyone keep that in mind. But uh, yeah, I think that's that's all I have to say about that. Thank you, Forrest. <laughs> so, would you like to go uh, talk about the awesome adventures of Captain Spirit? Yes, it's our game club time, which is when we get together and play a game because we have very different tastes and we rarely play the same game at the same time unless we actually mean to on purpose. Like the game club, for example. Indeed. And uh, this is a odd game club mostly because it's what a two hour and some change game it is a the prologue to the second season of life is strange which we did about a year ago now huh or a little bit over i should say yeah we did the the first season of life is strange that is the second season is not out yet oh, well it, it i think out the, i think the first soon. episode is out today or tomorrow is it let's go check But we had actually didn't. <laughs> but today is like the mother of all coincidences because we originally set this up and the second season didn't have a release date. Yep, it's out today. First episode. Yeah, uh, the uh, the second season didn't have a release date. It was just, you know, it was going to be sometime this year. And then the news story broke late last week that we're going to be talking about. So, you know, it's just like this perfect storm, right? Yeah. So we're going to be which, talking about episodic uh, also, games. Which also goes with uh, Life is Strange, the whole storm thing. Mm -hmm. ah! Yeah, I'm very much looking forward to Life is Strange too, but I refuse to play these games actually episodically. <laughs> when they, they're <laughs> yeah, all which, out, I'm going to buy them and play them. Yeah, which uh, yeah, we'll, uh, get, uh, we'll be talking about that, I think, in a bit as well. Uh, yeah. But, uh, while we're talking about Telltale, but right now we have Don't Nod to talk about. 
Indeed. Indeed. So, yeah, like you said, The Awesome Adventures of Captain Spirit is kind of like an anthology type thing. You know, it's a one-off, even though it's connected to the overall story of, of Life is Strange 1 and 2. There's Easter eggs in there that connect mm-hmm. to both games. Um, but I like stuff like this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't in have, general, like... Yeah, I don't... I don't think I would have enjoyed it as much if it was a direct sequel to the first season because there was a, uh, you know, uh, the choice there of what your, uh, yeah, your final decision. And this, it allows them to go off and do other things and not be tied down by uh, the decisions of the past. Yeah. And I think, I'm pretty sure I said whenever we were doing The First Life is Strange that, that this would make a great world or a great universe for an anthology type series yeah i think when we so were doing get... it uh the rumors were going around about the second season and we both agreed that we would prefer a, a shared world but not uh, a continuous story yeah plus it also allows uh you know jumping in points a lot easier because yeah you could easily play this and uh, uh the only con- direct connections is it mentions uh the teacher out of blackwell academy and blackwell academy itself and that's the only yeah. ones I saw. Yeah. Um, I think those are the only ones that I think I caught, too. Um, aside from, isn't it set in Oregon, which is where yeah. uh, Blackwater, or which is where Life is Strange 1 took place. Mm-hmm. But yes, I think that was it. I'm not sure what ties into the second game yet, other than the ending. Uh, I think it's, so far it's just the ending, but yeah, the first episode just literally came out, so that could change. Yeah, that's true. So, um, the actual story of this is much, much shorter and compact than the other Life is Strange game. Uh, there's lots of sort of side things to do in it, w- but uh, sorry. the whole story takes place in, on a, on a Saturday. Uh, your character, his name is Chris, and he's like an eight or a nine-year-old boy. Um, uh, nine, I believe. He's, he's a nine-year-old boy who's enjoying a Saturday in the, uh, wintertime. Um, and he goes on adventures. Captain Spirit is actually like his superhero alter ego, uh, where the he makes believe and plays pretend like most children do. Um, and I don't want to quite get into all the story stuff yet. I want to be sort of a little, yeah, I would actually classify this this as a a slice of life, uh, game where, you know, it's just what's going on. There's no uh, real overarching plot. There are, you know, hints of things going on in the background and uh, some more overt than others. And uh, it's setting up the story for the the next season. Yeah. So just generally, before we talk about the stories and the specifics, because that's going to send us off on a completely different tangent, which I've kind of given you a little taste of when we were talking before. Um, What were some things that you liked or disliked about it? Um, And how does it? stack up to life is strange season one in some aspects uh, well, like for example the first thing that pops into my mind is again the soundtrack like it's oh, yeah. obviously much smaller mm-hmm. because of the size of the game but it was still wonderful i loved it yeah i would say the only thing i really disliked about it was uh, a couple of the puzzles uh, because they didn't have enough time to really set up proper clues some mm-hmm. of them were obtuse that i in order to you know get the full experience, I just looked up online uh, at a guide to, uh, especially the pin uh, for uh, the cell phone for one of the uh, uh, awesome things to do that he wants to uh, do on a Saturday. Uh, yeah, I mean, looking back on it, it's kind of obvious, but uh, it's a, a cipher that didn't really uh, it seemed like it would fit in with everything else. Yeah. Agreed. Um, I mean, that was, I the, that yeah. was my big thing that I really disliked about. It was just a couple of the puzzles were a little too obtuse, but that's just you know, pay, uh, you know, the pacing of the story. There's just not enough time. Yeah. The, the only thing that I really didn't like about it was that I accidentally triggered the end before I'd had a chance to do everything. Um, and for reasons which I'll get into in a minute, I didn't want to go back and replay it. So when I was done, I was done. And I was like, oh, I didn't. I didn't mean to trigger the end. I was just, like, exploring, looking for clues for, like, and you, you know, hit, like the phone. And you hit the wrong thing. And I hit the wrong thing, and I triggered the end um, after about 90 minutes or so. Yeah, there's uh, 
uh, it's one of those games that you could finish uh, fairly quickly and skip a lot of the content, actually. It, I'm pretty sure it's just a timer that's going off in the background. And once yeah. it hits a certain point, you're able to trigger the ending at, at any point past that. Yeah. Um, Even though I'm not 100% sure on that, but it, it seems like that because I noticed uh, the... Uh, once you told me uh, that you accidentally triggered the end, I was able to deliberately avoid it. But yeah, uh, it was pretty obvious to me that that was going to trigger the end sequence. So I avoid that anyway. Yeah. Um, One thing that I really liked about it is how this game sort of plays with you, like making you think that he might have powers. Oh yeah, that opening sequence with the spaceship. Yeah, with the spaceship was amazing. And then there's a couple <laughs> other times when it happens, like with the TV... Um, and then, like, it, like, slowly reveals that he actually had the remote. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't completely confirm or deny that he has powers. I don't think he does. Um, and especially now that, like, well, they had this the... game first came out and we didn't know anything yeah. about the sequel. It could have been, like, the ending. It, he had powers. But that's almost certainly the two kids, the other two uh, kids yeah, that the well, it's been, about. Well, it's been confirmed, uh, you know, exactly who it is that has okay. the powers and it's not him. I've been trying to avoid spoilers as much as possible, and some of this game got spoiled for me. I tried really hard to avoid spoilers, but I mean, it was really big in, in you know the, the sort of the pop culture sphere for a couple of weeks after E3 when they you know dropped it for free for everyone. Yeah, so see, I just I uh, heard a few I, things I, about this. Anytime game. anything come, came up about, it, I just uh, immediately stopped reading. So I went into this pretty much completely blind. I mean, I knew it was going yeah. to be a heavier story than you know what it appears, but that was about it. But, you know, yeah, that opening sequence, uh, once they reveal, you know, pretty much what's going on in the background, I just thought, ooh, yeah, th this is going to be a bad day for uh, Jared. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was, do you, before we move, do we? Do you have anything else you want to bring up or talk about before uh, we move into the motion uh, of the not story? Not really. I do like that they did the, you know, be able to set and enjoy the scenery and have the soundtrack play up again. Uh, yeah, that was cool. When you climb up in the treehouse, and uh, it's, um, you can do that in the bedroom mm -hmm. uh, when you turn on the old record that your mom. I see. Liked, I didn't do the, your character's mom liked. Yeah, I didn't get the uh, do the record. Uh, I did. I did the treehouse, and there was one other, I think. And now I'm blanking on um, where it is. I don't think I found the other one because I did the one in your dad's bedroom, and then the treehouse. Okay, so, so uh, there was yeah, one, yeah, it was, it. Uh, yeah, it was his bedroom. That, that was it. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, uh, so I got the bedroom and the treehouse. If you don't turn on the record, does a different soundtrack song play? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I, got, I went in the bedroom and I flicked on the record player while I was exploring, and he just like lay down on the bed and listened to uh, that record, and I was like, okay, this is cool. I can lay here and do mm -hmm. this for a minute. Taking the soundtrack. Yeah, yeah, it's one of those things. It's a little touch, and it. It's, but it adds so much to the uh, characterization of the game, you know. It makes it feel a lot more realistic. And maybe that's uh, what I like about the Don't Nod games is that they're so character-driven. They're not so much yeah. about uh, the overarching plot, but how the characters are reacting and growing in it. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess we can move into the specifics of the story plot. Um, so... Like I, you know, I opened with you play Chris, uh, a nine year old boy, uh, and he lives alone with his dad. And you find out very quickly, very early on in the game, um, that his mom died somehow. You find that out later if you explore. Yeah, actually, um, I think it was about a year beforehand. Yeah. Yeah. About a year ago, his mom died. Um, and they have basically been spiraling down ever since. There is some evidence um, that becomes more apparent later that the father is abusive and also he is an alcoholic, but the father also is suffering as well. So he is a little bit of a sympathetic character too. Uh, and then you're, everything that you're doing is through the lens of how this kid is dealing with the loss of his mother and his dad and what he's doing to either overcome or just deal with what's going on with him. And, and that kind of depends on how you play the story, I think. Uh, and I would actually uh, add on uh, perhaps a little bit of guilt from Chris's perspective as well, especially considering the names of his villains that he's created. 
Yeah. Because there's the one that you didn't do, Manatroid. Ma- Mantroid? Mantroid. Which is yeah. a, a, a a combination of the two streets that his mother died on. Yeah, you get... Is that the one where you get the... The, tr- the, the truck, air yeah. quotes, spaceship? Yeah, yeah, the truck and it blasts off. Uh, I think that's uh, probably the uh, the real strength of this game is that uh, they were able to really portray the uh, uh, imaginative powers of a little boy really well on this. Just through uh, little things like changing the sound effect whenever the truck door opened. Yeah. Because uh, uh, the first time you get into the truck... Uh, it, yeah, it's the typical car door opening, but when it gets out on the alien world, uh, it's a uh, sound of a spaceship door opening, and it just kind of drew me in. I thought it was done really well. Yeah, and then the same thing with Snowmancer and the Water Eater, like the mm-hmm. Water Eater, which is uh, Snowmancer is a snowman, and the Water Eater is the Water Heater, and whenever you confront them, like, especially for the water eater it's like you go into this dark room and it turns into like this like demon thing and you like use your powers to tame the demon and then you flick the water heater on <laughs> and it goes from like this weird uh you know demon dark realm to just like uh, you know a laundry type room with a water heater in it yeah because he doesn't and it like turns the dark on and yeah um which was again really well done but in reverse in that and then with snowmancer you get a little bit of both um with it doing it both ways Mm -hmm. because snowmancer you have to like fix him before you fight him yeah because he's in a sorry state (laughs) yeah um his like nose or eye or something has fallen off and um i like too that your costume changes based on what you pick at the start yeah uh because i picked heavy armor so i got like um the beer can boxes (laughs) <laughs> and put those on. Yeah, um, I went with the light armor, so it was actually his father's old sports equipment. Yeah. But, so things like that are cute. Um, uh, and uh, there's a lot uh, well, of... I also went with the helmet instead of the mask. So, uh, yeah, uh, I foil. used the mask. Oh, uh, so we had completely different. <laughs> <laughs> we did. We we both had complete. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, it was an awesome adventure. It was. <laughs> uh, but we, did, we didn't plan that. <laughs> no, we didn't. Um, there's lots of clues you discover as you go through, too, to find out things about Chris and his dad and their life before. Uh, and their life now. Um, and this is where it really started to get to me. Like, well, I, it all got to me, but when I started going and seeing the stuff about his life, like, this game was very well written. Mm-hmm. They did their homework. Um, and ha- have an excellent writing team to put all this together. So I both have or had an abusive father when I was a kid and an alcoholic father. And then also what I do, the work that I do and the stuff that I've worked with, the kids that I've worked with, like I have seen this situation a bunch of times before. So like the farther it got, the more I was feeling conflicted. Like on the one hand, it was very well written. It felt very authentic, but there were several times where I just like had to stop and like, I could feel my anxiety rising in me because it was reminding me of things that have happened to me or that I have seen in real life. Yeah. Sorry. I, there I, I didn't know of, about that. Uh, yeah. That, and I, I mean, it's okay. And like I said, I went into the game uh, pretty much blind. So I didn't know the situations. I kind of knew about it, um, but I didn't realize how much it was going to affect me. But, I mean, it's fine. Like, And it also shows just how well it was that. done. Yeah. I mean, games that can do that, games that can pull something out of you, um, or any art form, really, that can pull something out of you, just shows how powerful it is and how powerfully it can affect someone. Um, and for a lot of people, it's, it's cathartic. Like, for me, um, I mean, I've been in therapy before, uh, to deal with the issues of my own father and and I have good days and I have bad days um, and just sort of having this experience it's not like I, I don't feel traumatized I don't feel like I had to relive it but just like I was surprised at how much it affected me versus other things that have in the past set me off about it you know triggered me to have uh, anxiety or depression 
Um, and I was very prepared, like, you know, I've got my own set of coping skills and things that I do whenever those feelings arise. And, uh, you know, I went through and did some of those while I was playing, but I didn't want to stop. Like I was compelled to keep playing because of how authentic it was and just sort of wanting to experience it to the end. So, you know, on the one hand, it was a, a very painful thing to go through, but in a good way, if that makes sense. And I, I didn't want to put it down. I wanted to go through to the end and experience it and just sort of feel what it made me feel. But when I accidentally triggered the ending, that was why I didn't want to go back to it. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to go put myself back in that place again. So that's that's what I was going through while I was playing it. But I don't like I don't regret a second of it. I thoroughly enjoyed it and I was just amazed at how real they were able to make it feel. Um for someone like me, but not go too far, you know, not make it overwhelming or over the um, top where it uh, breaks the realism. Right. Right. Because it, it wasn't so much that his father is evil or a, a terrible person. He's conflicted. He's, he feels bad about how he handles things. Yeah. Uh, he, yeah, reali father... he realizes that he's hurting a son, but I uh, can't help himself because he's uh, not able to uh, drag himself out of the bottle and out of this grief to be able to try to put his life together. Yeah. And I mean, that's very realistic. I, I see people like that now who deal with those same sort of issues. Um, they know that they're making bad choices, that they're doing, you know, wrong things, that they're being a bad parent or a bad husband or whatever. Uh, but they can't stop and they don't know how to stop. And you get the sense from the story that his uh, that the dad is too proud to ask for help. Mm -hmm. And that's something that happens with a lot of people, too. They're either too proud or too afraid of what people will think or too embarrassed. And they don't seek the help that they need. Yeah, especially uh, I think it was the letter from his grandmother. But uh, it sounds like that they basically cut all contact after his mother died. Yeah. At that and. uh uh, it's very obvious that uh, Chris, even after everything that he's gone through with his father, uh, still loves his father because when he finds the letter from Child Protective Services, yeah, uh, he's worried about uh, his father getting in trouble over him instead of yep. a chance to get away. Yep. And Chris uh, uh, tries to take care of his father. Uh, there's an opportunity to uh, make a microwave meal for him to make sure that he doesn't just have beer for breakfast again. And yeah, and there's plenty of things you can do around the house, like cleaning up and starting laundry mm -hmm. and taking the trash out and things like that. Um, now, taking the trash out is one of the ways to achieve one of the awesome things for the day, which is target practice. And you set up all of the beer cans and throw snowballs at them. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to take out the trash to do that. But, like, you don't have to wash the dishes or put away, um, like, the leftovers or clean out the fridge or start the laundry. Like, you don't have to do any of those things. But you can. And if you do, then like the neighbor notices at the end, and it's like, oh, you've yeah. been doing work around the house today. That's nice. And actually, and shovel snow. Uh, and, and there's a little upset that uh, you've uh, done had to do so much and uh, are not playing. Yeah, not or, or, to be a kid, or at least uh, that's what she was with me because I think I did everything around the house. I think I did too, or at least enough to trigger that, because I did all the things that I said I did, and then I shoveled snow outside. Um, yeah, I took out the recycling, uh, also known as yep. uh, the case of beer cans. Yep. Yeah, and Chris also is very aware that you know something is wrong because he talks about uh, why is, uh, he drink the, uh, the bottle of whiskey when it just makes him angry. Yep. I mean, uh, Chris is very aware. Yeah. Um, there's also the things that you can find, like Chris is getting into trouble at school and his grades have been bad. Mm -hmm. Uh, if yeah, you he open his secret stash. Yeah, he hid uh, his uh, recent report card. Yeah. He makes the comment, something along the lines of like, this is the worst it's been, but they're getting better. And he got into a fight with the school at, at school because one of the kids said something about his dad. Mm -hmm. There might be some other stuff that I missed in there, too. And then his dad, you can find uh, like the letter from his new girlfriend that Chris doesn't know yeah. anything about. Um, and that letter, like is also like a behavior from an abusive uh, 
partner. Because he's cut but, contact I mean, with her as well? Well, no, there's just some stuff in there about how he's mean and um, uh, I, makes I her mean, feel bad. I, I, I must have just read over it. I don't remember exactly what she said, and it also could be, like, because, like, I notice things like that. Yeah. Um, but basically, she's saying that he's, you know, he doesn't say nice things to her, that he's mean to her, that she's worried about him and his alcoholism and wishes that he'd just apologize and seek help and contact her uh, again. So, you know, he's, uh, you know, spiraling out of control, like we said, and he's taking it out on other people, too. So there's a, a lot of a lot of hidden stuff in this game for you to to pick out. Yeah, we're um, not even really scratching the surface. So. And he's all, he's also very upset about his past because he was a star basketball player and he missed out on being drafted in the NBA and he is very bitter about it, especially when he drinks. Uh yeah. Uh, uh, there's actually a little bit of randomization in it uh depending on uh, what happens. Uh, did you get the person calling from the church? Yeah, I did. Okay. Uh, there's a, that, that. and there's a few other things, uh, but, uh, you know, he's, uh, very spiteful about that, but he, you know, just listening to him berate the TV, uh, you know, about uh, the players playing and talking about how he could have, uh, you know, uh, dribbled circles around him uh, back in his day until, uh, I think he actually got an injury at uh, some point. That, I don't remember. Uh, I, I don't remember why he stopped. But yeah, he, I mean, that, and that's something too, that's very real. Like people have achievements from their past that, you know, life happened and they weren't able to pursue their dreams or whatever. And people get very bitter about that sort of stuff. Like that's another Mm -hmm. thing that goes into the characterization and development of this, of this character, uh, that brings a lot of depth to them. But, uh, yeah, there, there are more hidden things that you can find. There's all of the toys that you can play with. Yeah, which uh, you have um, to to get all the uh, uh, the checklist done. Yeah. Um, and those are both cute and sometimes sad. Um, you can choose whether or not to do like one thing. Otherwise, it's just you're watching him play and mm-hmm. sort of get his imagination out. And it's all connected to the death of his mother. Yeah, um, like uh, the shark stinger. Yeah, the that's the it that's like a Hot Wheels car and there's a like an innocent pedestrian that's about to get run over by the car and then you choose whether or not to save them. Which I saved the pedestrian. Uh, same here. But I imagine that um uh you know, it's probably not a good thing to not save that. Yeah, probably not. Um then there's Power Bear, which is on your side, and there's I forget what the enemy is that's like attacking Power Bear. Yeah, but that was just hilarious you, to me. Just every uh, every so often there was just dramatic close up, <laughs> and it's just uh, mm-hmm. a, a basically a bear on a, a superhero's body or a bear head, and it's just this yeah. passive look. Um, but yeah, you can choose whether or not to save Power Bear from the enemy that's attacking him. I can't remember what his name is, but he's one of Mantroid's like minions. Mm-hmm. And also uh, um, to finish off uh, the minion after saving Power Bear. Yeah. Yeah, to show more Sky Pirate. Yeah. There's Sky Pirate, which is your ally in what? What does he call his treehouse? The, the, flying, the flying Fortress. Fortress. Yeah. Which I like. I thought that was cute. Yeah, it's just a stuffed bear with a tinfoil <laughs> eye patch on. Yeah. Um, and then um, you can do the interview in the mirror in the bathroom. I actually didn't do that. Oh, that was cute. I mean, it's just a kid interviewing uh-huh. himself in the mirror or interviewing his superhero alter ego. Mm-hmm. And you get to pick some of the responses to the questions that the the journalist asks. I don't know if that affects anything in the story, but it, I'm sure it does. And I just didn't realize, you know, how it changed things. But essentially, the questions come down to like, are you going to be merciful um, and generous and be like, you know, a super good guy? Or are you going to be ruthless and like kill all the bad guys? Like, that's how all those questions basically broke down to. In other words, uh, Batman or uh, Wonder Woman? Yeah. Yeah. Batman or Wonder Woman or Batman or Superman. Well, Superman doesn't um, exactly kill. I know. That's maybe, what it, maybe yeah, horribly so. maim, but. Yeah. 
Well, That's why Wonder Woman's the best. <laughs> she kills all of her bat, all of her big enemies. So that's why she, she doesn't have like a big rogues gallery like Batman and Superman and a whole bunch of other heroes does. No, she has a big she's graveyard. Like, fuck it. Yeah, she's like, fuck it. I'm gonna stab these guys to death with my <laughs> awesome sword. Anyways, though, um, what are the other awesome things that you can do? So you have to uh, beat the water eater, or you have to collect you the entire to... uh, uh, group of superheroes uh, in the yep. ro- in his rogues gallery. Uh, yep. Go to Mantroid's uh, home planet to fight him. Uh, fight uh, Snowmancer. So, uh, fight uh, the Water Eater. You have to find the lost treasure. Yeah, which... Did you do that? Um, no. Oh. I did, like, I, I got the map, and he's like, aha, here's where I need to go. And, like, so I went and I crawled in there, but he kept going, like, I need to find the map. I need to find the map. So I don't know if it broke or if I did something wrong. Uh, well, but. Uh, in order to do that, you had to get the key to it, which was in the secret stash, and then go back to the map and uh, line it up to get the uh, the directions to go. Yep, which I did that. That's that's what I was saying, but like I got the uh, map. I got the whole map. Uh, weird. Uh, I was able to do that. Uh, do you want to know what's that, uh, what a secret treasure is? Yes, please. A stash of photos of his mother. And he's, cr- oh. and he's crying while looking at him. Oh. Yeah. Well, that makes me sad. I'm kind of kind of glad I didn't find that in the moment. Actually, yeah, I I don't know if my game just glitched out or something, but I because I went up to the treehouse, I found the the key to the map, and then I went back to my room and I lined him up, um, and then I went back to the thing and crawled around, and he just kept saying, "I need to." Well, there was also I get some help to get oh, through oh, here. No, 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 no. Wait, the key was uh, something different. Uh, there was also a physical key, but that was in his dad's room. So I got that. I got that key. So yeah, he just, I guess the game just like glitched out or something because he just, I couldn't find my way through the maze and I eventually gave up and moved on. And I think there was also one of his mom's comics because she was an artist and she went to Blackwell. I thought that com- was in his comic. room. Uh, there was actually uh, a few different comics. Oh, okay. Uh, there, uh, I know there was one in the treehouse, uh, but they're actually very yeah. cute. You know, they're little slice of life comics. <laughs> yeah. Um, but let's see all those things. Then there was target practice, which I mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. throwing snowballs to the beer cans. I did that. Yeah, I'm trying to find it. Oh, no. Was that everything? Uh, I got, I got everything except for the treasure and going to the planet. Mm-hmm. Uh, cause I accidentally, oh, oh, like I the, said, I accidentally uh, triggered the, uh, end. the mini game, uh, the, uh, um, the mustard man, uh, mini game, uh, oh, yeah, the es- phone. essentially flappy birds. Yeah, yeah, I didn't get into the phone, so that was those were the the three that I missed: the treasure, getting into the phone. Yeah, which getting into the phone, and, uh, uh, it was obtuse because it was uh, it's a simple uh, substitution cipher. Uh, you know, uh, each letter is assigned its uh, 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 numeric place in the alphabet. A is one, B is two, that sort of thing. Uh, but that's not hinted at e- at all. And what the actual password is, is a hinted at, which is Hot Dog Man, which is, or sorry, Hot Dog, which is a, a character that he likes. And there's a couple comic books around, but there's nothing to really link the two. Yeah. But that's just, I think, uh, really a symptom of the game being so damn short. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's the gist of the story you go through and discover as much of it as you can and you know put the pieces oh, together oh, the, as much oh as the you superhero can. costume I, I found the list actually it was superhero costume which includes painting it uh snowmancer the treasure map uh beer can range beat all the evil toys defeat mustard party 2 mantroid's planet and loot the treasure yeah <clears throat> but so yeah, you go through, you do as much of that as you want to or can or get to before you maybe accidentally trigger the end like I did. Um, and then you trigger the ending, which is you go to wake your dad up because uh, at breakfast he promised you that he was going to take you to get a real Christmas tree. He just wanted to watch the game first, yeah, the basketball game. Yeah, I guess and, he T-voted or something because it's, uh, yeah, whatever you start the game. Uh, it's actually breakfast time, and he actually uh, got pretty upset with me because I didn't immediately uh, uh, go into the kitchen to start uh, having breakfast. 
Oh, that's interesting. He called for me, and I went right out. Yeah. Or out within just a couple of minutes. And he was like, oh, that's weird. I didn't have to call you again. No, I, he called me once, and he called me a second time just as I was opening up the door. And he got pissed because of that. Uh, talking about how it wasn't a hotel, and I would uh, uh, come when he called. So, you know, it was uh, pretty clear that, you know, he has anger issues. Okay. Interesting. My, like, first interaction with him did not involve that, because I came out after he called the first time. Um, and, yeah, he was nice. He was like, oh, wow. I didn't have to call you a second time. And Chris was like, yeah, sometimes I listen, <laughs> or something like that. And his dad was like, well, that's good. Let's see if we can get that to be more often, buddy. And there, and there was Breakfast al- is almost ready. Yeah, and there was also uh, the thing about, you know, uh, how do you like your bre- uh, how, how do you like breakfast? And uh, his father's very apologetic about not being able, not being as good a cook as his mom was. Yeah, uh, and it's one because I was like, eggs are fine, your yeah. breakfast is fine, yeah, that, and he's like, yeah, well, I know it's not mom's. That's why I said too. Yeah, uh, and it's you know, very clear that he's trying, but he's just so caught up with everything. Yeah, and, and I think that's what makes it more tragic for me. Yeah, but yeah, so you have breakfast, and then he, your dad says that. You know, he'll take you to Christmas tree and Chris is like, oh, but you always fall asleep during the game. And he's like, well, just wake me up and then we'll go. And so when you wake him up, that triggers the end of the game. Well, mind and you, I, like, uh, in well, high- well, I do want to say uh, during the game, he did consume an entire bottle of whiskey. And this was after yeah, having a- two or three beers for breakfast. Yeah, he has three beers for breakfast and a bottle of whiskey while he's watching the basketball and potentially game. And some, and potentially some uh, microwave uh, uh macaroni if you made it for him yeah um so you wake him up and he he's i mean he's drunk and he falls out of his chair and he hurts himself um and he yells at you uh and then there's a knock at the door because the neighbor heard the crash yeah he was rather um, loud I, he, it wasn't just you know you know fall down he uh he did like this rube goldberg he hit his knee fell down on the couch uh, rolled off the couch, knocked over the table, and knocked over all the cans on the table. Yeah. Um, so you, then you talk to the neighbor lady, uh, who you could actually have a conversation on the phone with before. Yeah, I actually didn't do that. I, I figured I did that. I figured talking to her would have probably been a bad idea with his father around. So it turns out that she's like a very nice lady whose husband helped build the treehouse. Mm-hmm. Um. But anyway, so she shows up and she's talking to you and she's like, hey, I heard I was out walking. I heard the crash. Is everything OK? And you have a short conversation with her. Um, and my conversation ended with her leaving and going to contact uh, Child Protective Services. Yeah, see, she didn't uh, uh, go immediately to contact Child Protective Services for me, but she was very clearly uh, upset at my state and uh, the yeah. state of the house. Uh, even though I had been cleaning it up, she, yeah, uh, she saw all the beer cans. She saw everything else, and uh, I think she was, uh, yeah, you know, trying to downplay it a bit for me. Yeah, she didn't. She was like, by the time I was finished with the conversation, she was like, "Well, that's all I need to hear. I'm gonna go get Steven, and we're gonna make a couple of phone calls." And then she left, and I was pretty positive. I mean, she didn't explicitly say, but I was pretty positive she was gonna call CPS. Uh. Yeah, well, that, okay, that was about what she said to me. She was just talking about going to get her husband, but wasn't uh, talking about making phone calls for me. So maybe it was a slight difference for me. That that might have been because I called her. Because when I talked to her on the phone, like, you have a nice little chat with her. And then you end the conversation with saying something about keeping the bad guys away. Mm-hmm. And she's like, what? What bad guys? What's going on? And then you, like, hang up the phone on her. So that might have been, like, a slight difference. Uh, maybe. Um, uh, granted, uh, yo, you do... Uh, a greeter in full uh, superhero costume. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, so that was the conversation with her. And then you go back inside and your dad's like, I heard the whole conversation. And, you know, you're like, I'm sorry. I, w- I didn't mean to, like, do anything. I was just talking to her. And then he, like, makes fun of you for being a crybaby and then yells at you. Uh, and it tells you to you man up. Fact that, uh, yeah. Gr- uh, grow and, up. Uh, you're not a little kid anymore. Why are you crying? Which yeah, uh, which made me cry. Yeah, which come on, uh, tell that crying kid uh, grow up. Uh, you you're, you shouldn't be crying. That's good. That's really gonna make him stop, huh? Yeah. Um, and then uh, he like realizes what he's done and he starts apologizing, but 
Chris runs out the door to his treehouse. Oh, starts to uh, climb did you get up. a different thing then? Because there was another uh, big thing there. What What was the other thing? He was talking about how much uh, Chris was like his mother. Oh, yeah. No, he did that. He uh, said and that you, and uh, blame Chris for I her death. I over that. Yeah, I, I glossed over that. Uh, sorry. But, yeah, uh, I got that. Sorry, I wasn't sure if it uh, was different then because – uh, yeah, uh, no, uh, that, obviously Chris is dealing with uh, uh, guilt. Feeling uh, this is obviously not the first time uh, he's blamed uh, uh, Chris for her death. Uh, and yeah. He's having to deal with the guilt that maybe you know, he did cause his mother's death, which it was uh, yeah not certain if it was uh, she uh, was going to pick him up, but yeah, you know, that's not really causing it. You know, he wasn't driving the car. Yeah, but that may have also spawned his whole, <laughs> whole superhero persona to begin with. Just you know, you know, yeah, trying to save everybody after his mother both was killed and the person that uh, killed her was never caught because it was a hit and run, and he just played off. Yeah. Uh, so on uh, top of that, you know, he has the guilt there already, and he's uh, uh, being blamed for it and uh, saying how much like his mother he is. Uh, supposedly he, he looks a lot like her, acts a lot, a lot like her, and he's also a, a cartoon. Yeah, he draws a lot of cartoons and uh, comics. So he's obviously yeah. following in her footsteps, and he's not as athletic as his father would like because he's not good at basketball. And uh, one of his things on his Christmas on his uh, Christmas list, uh, Santa, was actually basketball lessons. Uh, so his father would be uh, more proud of him. Yep. And he and like he blatantly states that. Yeah, I don't remember exactly what he says, but he's like, "This should make my dad happy, Mm -hmm. or should make him feel good, or something like that." So that's why he put the basketball lessons on his Christmas list. But what he really wanted was, (laughs) what did they call it? The game box, Uh, Um, which is just a video game console. The the play box. The play box. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was cute. Uh, And you actually find Um, the play box. (laughs) Father, yeah. If you go into your dad's room and open his closet, you find out that he bought bought it for you for Christmas. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, Uh, it's very obvious that he's trying. Like I said, but oh, it's just uh, so conflicted. Yeah, Um, but so, anyways, your dad, you know, yells at you, and then he goes to apologize, but like it's too late. You can't take that back. And Chris is upset, so he runs outside and goes to climb up his treehouse. And he gets maybe halfway or three quarters of the way up the ladder, um, and then it breaks. Uh, it breaks, and he falls down. And just as he's about to hit the ground, like he's got his hands out, and there's this like wave underneath him, and it pushes the snow back, and he starts levitating. And he's like, "Oh my god, do I have powers?" And he looks up, and there's these two kids from a um, next door, the next from next door, and they like wave at him, and he waves back, and then like that's it. That's that's the end. Yeah, uh, and if we played this in a vacuum and didn't know uh, the protagonist of the uh, second Life is Strange season, we would be debating right now, yo, who actually has the powers because they teased who has it, the powers because they teased it so much, you know, that maybe he does have powers, you know, the whole with the spaceship and everything else, but it's pretty obvious the uh, uh, younger brother. And see, based on life is the the first life is strange. It would make sense too if he did, mm-hmm. because the powers from the first one were triggered by a dramatic event. Yeah, um, when Max witnessed the the shooting was when she realized she had the ability to to reverse time. Mm-hmm. So it would make sense, uh, based on the universe's rules, for Chris to have developed powers in this sort of moment of trauma for him. But yeah, I mean, you know, we're not in a vacuum. We know that it's the two kids from across the, or from the neighbor or the neighbor kids that at least one of them has powers. Yeah. Um, I've, you know, tried to stay as spoiler free as possible. So I don't know if both of them do or what, but at least one of them has powers and they were the ones who were levitating Chris. Yeah. And there's, it's actually kind of funny looking at the, uh, character page for Claire Reynolds, the, uh, neighbor lady. Uh, it, yeah. uh one of the comments, I'm 90% sure she's the telepath, uh, telepathic who saved, uh, the kid. After appearing in the house, it was obvious that she didn't trust the situation and hung around a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. Wrong. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, that's that's it. That's how it ends. It, you know, cuts to black and credits roll. And I uh, said that you'll uh, see more of Chris in uh, Life is Strange Season 2. I imagine probably yeah. just the first episode. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, they the... I know that season two takes place a little bit in the future, so the kids will be aged up 
Um, so who knows if he'll be recurrent or if he'll just show up in one of the seasons or maybe it's like a flashback um, and you, you're playing that moment from the other side and then like what happens next. Don't know. Look forward to finding out when we do Life is Strange Season 2, maybe next year. Yeah, probably uh, late next year. Yeah. But, you know, overall, I, I really liked this game. Um, you know, it made me feel bad in some ways. It made me feel good in some ways. But any game that can really get to you and at your emotional core is doing something right. And I'm not, you know, afraid to confront bad feelings so overall mm -hmm. i mean i think it's awesome it's well written the soundtrack was great yeah chris um, was just adorable felt... he was he uh, absolutely was uh, he, he reminded uh, me a lot of max from the first season just how yeah uh, uh, just how uh, he would uh, act out uh, things and uh, occasionally you get a glimpse of that with max so i would imagine yeah that she was uh well uh, we know that she was very similar because you know there was a picture of her playing pirates with chloe so yeah so overall, I really like this game. And I mean, it's free. It's going to be free forever as far as I know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if if you've listened this far and you haven't played it yet, you want to see it firsthand because there is, you know, I mean, we spoiled the whole thing, but there is something to be gained from still playing it and witnessing it. Yeah. And also, um, uh, you know, all the little things, uh, seeing all the different comics, uh, both that Chris made and his mother made and see, uh, just uh, how uh, Charles, his father, has been uh, trying to deal with things because there's some uh, interesting tidbits that you could uh, find in, around the house. Yeah. I, I wouldn't mind seeing more of a slice of life games like this where there's not this huge overarching story, but it's just the character's life. But granted, you know, yeah. it, it can't be a very expensive game and that's going to be the problem with that type of thing. I loved how short this was, mm -hmm. just that little window into their life. Like, I think there's a lot of people who are like this, want good experiences that aren't a kajillion hours. Because um, I only have so much time every week to dedicate to games. And I have one or two games that I'm pretty much always playing. And so it's nice to have a game that I can complete in a sitting. Because, I mean, it, I played it for about 90 minutes or so, which is a movie. Yeah, I think I, a couple episodes yeah, of I think TV I played show, it a little you know, bit longer, sitting. but I also did all the little side objectives. Yeah. So, totally recommend. Do um, you have anything else you want to add? or? No, I think that I is don't. about it. It was a uh, just a very, well, I can't even say a very nice uh, uh, story because, you know, it's, you know, it's a very uh, heavy story. Uh, well, with tones of he heaviness, I should say it's very it's bookended by it. You know, there's a, a very serious part at the very beginning and a very serious part at the very end, and everything else is just kind of fluff. You know. Yeah, but because it doesn't overstay its welcome, the fluff is is nice, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to just being like, God, why is all this stuff here? Let's focus on what's more important. But even though it's fluff, it is important to the characterization of of everyone and. And adding depth to the yeah, I'm not sure if uh, this game would have uh, would have been able story. to support a full season worth of story, short of doing a lot of time jumps. You know, uh, just a, a random day uh, 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 every so often. But I, I think that I think it would uh, lose its luster. I think it'd lose the gimmick very quickly. Yeah. Alrighty. But it was a nice change well, of pace for the genre, I think I should say. I agree. And an excellent Game Club palette cleanser after Fallout. Um, yeah. You know, short, sweet, yeah, and deep, going but in, not... Yeah, and going into the death that's coming up. Yeah. Speaking of which, that's an excellent transition to remind you what our Game Club game is for October. Yeah, we're doing another uh, and, uh, very, very scary game this time. It's the Dwarf uh, Fortress. Yes, uh, Slaves of Armok 2, Dwarf Fortress. <laughs> oh. Looking forward to it. I've heard a lot of stuff about this game yeah, over the yeah, years, is, especially from you. Yeah, this is one of those games that everybody kind of, you know, uh, talks about in hushed tones, you know, Dwarf Fortress, you know, the super uh, tough, uh, very deep uh, uh, management roguelite uh, fantasy sim, depending on really how you're approaching it. And this is one that I, you know, I could talk about right now, really. <laughs> because Yeah, but I can't. Uh 
Yeah, I've uh, spent many of hour with older versions of Dwarf Fortress. And I'm uh, got my world built up and I'm ready to go for the next one. Yeah, I've got well, uh, do you want me to I was gonna walk set you it through up it? Yesterday, huh? Do you want me to help uh, walk you through uh, how to set up at least? If I have problems, I won't be afraid to ask. But I mean, yeah. I've got a guide and I've got everything ready to set it up. I just well, I'll I'll, I'll, tell, get to. I'll give you one major major thing that will help. All right, well, actually, two major things. One, do not set up in an evil biome. That's bad. Okay. I won't say why, but I will say do not do it. Especially for your first few fortresses. Second, when you're finding a site uh, and using the in-game uh, search uh, for it, search for no aquifers. Trust me. Okay. I'm not sure if you want me to tell I you will why, trust you. but... No, I'm good. Don't tell me why. Okay. Don't spoil it. But I'll, I'll spoil I'll it next advice. month. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's what we're doing next. And do we want to announce the one for November just so people can start preparing? If uh, they want sure. To? Uh, because, uh, you know, uh, we didn't get any participation on this, which I have to admit is a little disheartening, especially for a free game that's two hours. Go- Ghosty Goo, you even got an extra day, man. Send, send something in post, you know, send, send it in next week. I know that you had some school stuff going on, so you weren't sure you were going to get to actually do a letter and send it in. But do one anyway. Send it in next week. Uh, so our November game club is going to be another kind of palate cleanser because uh, have we done this genre before? No, I don't think so. Uh, we're doing a, I guess technically it'd be a real time strategy. Uh, Divinity Dragon Commander. Yep. What's more badass than a dragon? A dragon with a jetpack. <laughs> Yep, I'm looking forward to this too. Um, I've had this game for a while now. Yeah, I picked it up really for very cheap during it. the last uh, Steam Winter Sale. And we're actually going to have to convene to figure out December. Yeah, I have uh, I have received multiple requests for a certain game which I purchased for you here recently. Yeah, which would have been um, perfect for October if we got it sooner. <laughs> it would be. It would be, but that's okay. We could still maybe do that for December or very early next year because i i've had multiple requests for that game and a guarantee from cube that he will send in something when we do it he promised me yeah but we do so. give uh, cube a pass because of reasons yeah but anyways yeah we can we'll, we'll we can discuss that later um but that would be a strong contender in my book but anyways yes so dwarf fortress for october Divinity Dragon Commander for November. Yeah, it's, I'm really looking forward to Dwarf Fortress because they've changed a lot. Dwarf Fortress is still technically an alpha state. <laughs> I'm looking forward to playing it to experience it, but I'm not sure I'm actually looking forward to the experience, if that makes sense. like It, it really I'm depends on I'm looking forward to trying much, something new. Well, uh, well, it also depends on what version or, or what uh, mode we're going to play because uh, yeah, I kind of assumed uh, the Dwarf Fortress mode. Okay. Because sure. Uh, well, well, like I said, uh, it's essentially three games. It's a fantasy sim, just you know, world uh, builder. Uh, it's a a colony management game, a town builder, but it's also a very, very, very massive open world rogue light and adventure mode. Yeah, we'll just stick to the Dwarf Fortress mode, I think. Yeah, I've never really actually tackled the adventure mode. It's still uh, about half-baked. Right. Okie dokie. Well, moving on to the only other thing we are going to cover tonight um, is the whole deal going on with Telltale Games, how their studio is shutting down. Yeah, talk about Um, timing on this, huh? Yeah. I don't know if you want to call that good timing or bad timing. Yes, Uh, and given the situation but as we uh know or if you remember uh it was what a few months ago when they were announcing that they were gonna have to lay off something like 25 percent of their staff yeah um, yeah there were some uh, there were some uh, layoffs and they were also talking about changing game engines uh going yeah. from uh, their in-house engine which let's face it it's never been particularly great but it's definitely shown its age over the last couple years 
to, oh yeah uh to uh running pure unity which would have added a lot more flexibility but seems like it was too little too late yeah um first of all this sucks for a lot of reasons um uh, particularly for the uh, uh the uh, sort of adventure game genre uh, for lack of a better term because telltale has always kind of had their own thing it I, I wouldn't really call it an adventure game but, but you know a narrative driven uh, uh uh game you know yeah i mean they were very much choose your own adventure games with a little bit of extra um involvement you know compared to the old just like paperback copies where you would turn to page whatever and do the thing um, but that's how I always thought of them, like the modern version of the choose your own adventure books and more and more things got added over time, uh, in terms of like mechanics and things like that, but not so much to save the studio through innovation. Um, but yeah, I mean this, we'll, we'll be jumping around probably as we, yeah, we go have from topic what, to like topic on all of these articles. Yeah, we have a half a dozen different links for this because this has been quite the story. Uh, yeah, so, uh, uh, I mean, the first thing this sucks for is all of the employees that got let go without severance. And without, without any warning whatsoever, and broke a lot of California labor laws in the process. Yep. So, the employees are actually filing a class action lawsuit against Telltale, but to be perfectly honest, even if they get, do uh, get a settlement before Telltale liquidates, what's let's be honest, is going to be pretty soon. Based on some of the stuff that they talked about uh, in some of the other articles, how essentially what sunk them was losing the Lion Gate deal because they sunk in yeah. uh, uh, the remaining capital to try to uh, uh, get a deal with Lion Gate. And the fact that their sales have been fucking abysmal. Yeah. Most companies um, have got sort of clauses and things built in for when stuff like this happens. Like sometimes you'll hear it with like really big companies like uh, what was it? Sears last year when they restructured and like it's always put as like such and such CEO gets a bonus of however much money. And sometimes that can happen. Like I'm not saying that, that, you know, people don't take advantage of those situations, Mm -hmm. But I do have a little bit of insight into this just because of my dad's company, uh, which once he incorporated, he had to have this stuff set up. But anyways, like legally, you're required to have essentially like, um, I don't know, like a rainy day fund or something. An escrow account or if, something for lack of Yeah, account. and if something happens to your company, it's an operating budget to take care of close-up expenses before you liquidate. And different size companies have different amounts that they're supposed to keep. Um, now, given that they essentially broke a whole bunch of laws with letting their people go, either they might not have as much as they're supposed to, or they might not actually have one at all. Like maybe they've dipped into it early. But if things are being done the way that they should be, Telltale should have a, a fund to deal with this, which might be what the uh, the settlement comes out of. So fingers crossed all of the employees will be able to get something once they win this lawsuit because I'm pretty sure they will in California. Yeah. Um, but the, but, but the there's, you know, there's no guarantee. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, I mean, you mentioned their sales. Their sales have been Abysmal. dying. Oh, well, let's put it this um, way. The last time that they broke a million sales was The Walking Dead Season 2, which is in 2013. Yeah. Now, now I want you to. St- been... I want you to stop. Take a look at the calendar, and take note of the current year. <laughs> current year argument. Well, not current year argument. It's more of a yeah time frame argument. I know. But yes, yeah, so that was in 2013. And Tales from the Borderlands did roughly, looking at this graph, 800,000. Game of Thrones, 758,000. Well, 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 I was going to add in one other thing. The last time they broke 500,000 sales was Game of Thrones, which was 2014. In the meantime, they've had Minecraft Story Mode, The Walking Dead uh, uh, miniseries, Batman uh, The Telltale Series, The Walking Dead A New Frontier, Guardians of the Galaxy The Telltale Series, Minecraft Story Mode Season 2, Batman uh, The Enemy Within, and this graph doesn't actually have the final season of The Walking Dead, so... Yeah, that seems a 
bad. The, uh, they're, they're, they broke the vast rule of a game development. You keep doing the same thing over and over again, and you expect different results. That's insanity. Yeah. Now, I will say that this chart says that it only is using Steam sales figures. Yeah, true. All of these games are on multiple platforms, um, including things like mobile and whatnot. Uh, so this is not like a, an, you know, a fully detailed picture. Mm-hmm. But even if they were getting the same amount of sales as they got on Steam on these other platforms, like with their most recent games, they're still struggling I, I mean, to break 500,000. I mean, take a look at their last three releases on this guardians of the galaxy minecraft uh, story mode season two and batman enemy within the second season of that all three of those games combined when it even hit i would say a hundred thousand sales if that yeah i'd say a hundred thousand not two hundred and fifty thousand though i mean that but is I would, I would that's three yeah. major ips and they would have to sink a ton of money to get those licenses licenses Yep. They're spending millions of dollars and not even you know, making pennies back. And it's just it reeks of uh, just terrible, 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 terrible management to me. They oversaturate the market. They, uh, I mean, uh, look, look at this. They have how many games between uh, just in the last year, three that uh, d- uh, sold abysmally? Ab- abysmally? They had three in the previous year uh, that also did uh, incredibly poorly. People were just tired of Telltale's formula. They never did anything to try to shake things up. Yeah. And it also started to get uh, very clear that the formula, what it was, if there was some sort of major choice, it was either a illusion of choice or the game was going to do whatever it wanted anyway. And uh, if, there, if it was a, a choice of characters dying, the only thing it would change is essentially a skin. So, yeah, but it was very uh, disappointing once you kind of, uh, once the man behind the curtain was revealed, really. And was it the Wizard of Oz? It was just this rather stinky old man from Kansas. <laughs> yeah. Um,. But, yeah, I mean, there's been some controversy, too, about what they're going to do with The Walking Dead. When this first happened, they were like, no, it's going to be fine. We'll be fine. But they were trying to get the developers to finish the game without paying them. (laughs) And thankfully, they all, all of the developers, that is, were like, no, fuck you. And they left. And the Um, fact that fans are actually uh, upset the developers were doing that uh, just boggles my mind. Yes, I get it. People yeah. are upset that you know the game was pulled mid season, but expecting people to spend that much time—I mean, it would take months to finish that game. Uh, yeah, if uh, how they handle things is any way like I expect them to, they are essentially running on the South Park schedule, where as soon as the episode is finished, it is out the door, and they just released the second episode. It was already pretty much you know, done, and it was uh, set up and ready to go. So they probably have the sc- uh, script all through. I doubt they have it all recorded, so they don't have the voice actors. Yep, they definitely don't have it animated. Yeah. And there might be some things like... You uh, know, our assets as well. have little activities or um, mini games or whatever that might not be coded or set up. You know, like... Yeah, I would imagine... Who knows that, how much is... I would imagine, yeah, reused assets would obviously be there, but anything new wouldn't be there most likely, or be in a very rough state. So expecting them to just rush it out, you're not going to want that. Uh, so yeah. they've uh, waffled back and forth on this. At first they said, oh yeah, it's definitely coming out. Then uh, they said, oh no, it's not. Then they're saying, well, uh, we're in talks with uh, 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 partners have contacted us to release the rest of the uh, final season in some form. And I think that's the key words here, some form. So we're either yeah, uh, we're not looking at uh, yeah, the continuation of this uh, season, in my opinion. We're either looking at no, uh, a, maybe a comic book, which kind of brings the series full circle because it started as a comic book and went to a TV series. The TV series got popular enough to get to spawn off a couple of video games, which now possibly because Telltale horribly, horribly, horribly mismanaged everything, 
came back around to become a comic book. Or we may just yep, end and up... And the TV series has been in trouble, too, with falling ratings and things like that. Uh, so. uh, oversaturation, once again, huh? It might all come back down to the comic book <laughs> or the, the graphic novel. Uh, honestly, uh, I would half expect this to go the way of Half-Life 3 and we just get a blog post of the synopsis. Yeah. Which, which I mean, I which is sad. I haven't played uh, past season two. I didn't even finish season one. I I tried to care about the game, but I just wasn't for me. I just it didn't click for me. And maybe that's also part of the you know reason why they failed is that I mean, just look at this list. If you didn't like Batman, if you didn't like Minecraft, if you didn't like Game of Thrones, uh, or uh, Borderlands, yeah, there's nothing here. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, oh, Wolf of Mark, Which, sorry. Uh, there was also that. But that was also a pretty big seller for him. I, I really think that they... Uh, well, th- uh, they hit it big with the first Walking Dead s- uh, season. And they overexpanded. And they just weren't... Uh, they expanded so much that they couldn't sustain it. Because just look at the sale comparison between The Walking Dead and The Wolf Among Us. The, the two games back to back. The Walking Dead, according to this, is 3.5 million, just over it. Uh, and The Wolf Among Us is just over a million. Wolf Among Us, yo, million is a good amount of sales, especially for a very unknown series. I think that's a fair thing to say about the Tales series. Is it's a very unknown outside of certain circles. Yeah. So getting a million sales is very good. But the fact that they expanded from a fairly small team with the walking dead to over 300 400 people yeah they were somewhere around 400 when they had mind those you, layoffs and we don't know if that mind you mind you 400 people in san francisco yeah which i really don't understand why so many developers are fixated on San Francisco. Well, I do understand bits and pieces of it. You know, it is Silicon Valley. There is a, uh, a the talent pool there, but the prices there are just so astronomical that it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, there's same. this little thing called telecommuting. Yep. And there are some benefits to having an office in a place like San Francisco or New York or something like that. Like. There are benefits, but there's also lots of negatives. And small studios have difficulty, you know, paying for that shit because it's very expensive to live and work in those cities. Yeah, I think uh, the average rent in San Francisco is 3000 a month for a shitty apartment. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure whether there's not more, like, studios in places like Tennessee. Yeah, just in Bumpet, nowhere. Cost of living nowhere. is so low here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and cost of living is uh, low here too. And like I said, telecommute. You don't need to have face-to-face meetings with a Skype, with uh, a Discord. I mean, hell, just webcams, right? Yeah. Or maybe the casual, I mean, uh, actual face-to-face. Yep. Spring for like one company trip every so often. Uh, if you need to get everybody together for things. Which, hell, one company trip uh, a quarter, uh, you know, that's less than probably you know, uh, half the uh, uh, year's rent in San Francisco, San Francisco for a good-sized office. Which yeah. is a combination of things in San Francisco. You know, it's a lot of new money, but also, according to what I've read, uh, there's a lot of city ordinances that drive up the rent because there, you can't build tall buildings there. So, yeah, that's part of the reason why San Francisco is insane. At yeah. least from what I was able to read. Oh, but, yeah, it's just mind-blowing, all the incompetence. You know, driving away a lot of their good talent, having very expensive talent that they don't really utilize. Uh, there was also a thing, uh, actually, I'm going to have to... Uh, put uh, put in the show notes because I didn't add it, but I linked it to you. Did you watch the video game story time? Uh, no, I never got around to watching it. Uh, they also talked about uh, when the uh, the original CEO left of Telltale, which now I'm blanking on his name. Uh, if the uh, board of directors felt like it uh, 
was reflecting bad on the company. So in order to prevent a major head of the company to leave again, they constantly rotated people in and out of different projects. So there was never a real cohesion. But it also you know, added a lot of infighting and made the place very toxic, which also drove out uh, talent. I mean, it's just, uh, it's the Rube Goldberg machine of failure. Yeah. And uh, from this point, looking back, it's kind of obvious that, you know, things were not going to end well for him, but this just came out of nowhere all of a sudden. There was no, you know, hints that things were that bad. Because they were talking about their future, they were talking about uh, being able to uh, salvage the company, but they were all, it was all or nothing on Lionsgate for the Super Show, uh, I think it was, a uh, contract, and it just didn't uh, come through. Which makes me wonder, yo, yeah, was that the severance <laughs> budget? Maybe. Oh boy, Maybe. that would that would be so many lawsuits. Oh, which it's a shame because even though the Telltale formula did get old, they could have invaded. They could have tried to do something different, and they tr- uh, got a lot of big stories. But that's also kind of the double-edged sword here, where. They got a lot of notoriety for Batman, uh, for having Batman, for having Guardians of the Galaxy, even though I think a lot of people didn't realize that they had Guardians of the Galaxy because they never advertised it. Uh, that they were tied down by the existing lore of those characters. They were tied down by the lawyers. They were tied ta- uh, down by the board of directors. They were tied down by the people that they were licensing from. So they were never able to really do anything risky with the exception of Tales from the Borderlands, which I think they had more freedom on. So uh, that's ki- this is kind of coming back around to comparing Telltale with Don't Nod, where Don't Nod is doing their own thing with their own IP, and they have complete freedom over it, you know? They don't have to worry about, oh, well, let's give Batman a gun. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I'm... Uh... I'm sad to see him go. Yeah, I am too, but it's kind of obvious that things were not doing, going well. Oh, I, I wish that they could have, you know, saved it, you know? Yeah, me too. Because they, ha- well, they were working on uh, pre-production uh, uh, for The Wolf Among Us 2, which is canceled. They were working on yep. Stranger Things, which honestly, I've never watched Stranger Things, but we're... That one's still going yeah, on. Yeah, Netflix I was about to say, over that. Yeah, uh, Netflix is... Uh, gonna uh, are they going to do it in house or are they contacting someone? Uh, we don't know uh, yet. What, at least not. Well, what was hilarious last time I was Devolver it. Digital piped up and said, "Hey, we can do it." <laughs> uh, which I do want to kind of throw in the Devolver Digital uh, uh, article. They were talking about uh, which I realized comparing Devolver Digital and Telltale is like comparing apples to pears. Yes, they're kind of similar, but not quite. One is a publisher and one is a developer, but Devolver was talking about how uh, every game doesn't have to sell 500,000 uh, copies, that they could try very small projects to try to diversify, to try to find those little niches. And that's something that Telltale is never going to be able to do with these large licenses. So I think that was also another failure on Telltale. And they also yeah. abandoned, you know, very popular series. They abandoned Sam and Max. They never really went back. They never went back to the, the uh, Tales of Monkey Island. They completely cut off uh, their true point and click stuff once The Walking Dead came out. I mean, it was there was some before it with the Back to the Future game, but that was still in the kind of the realm of uh, point and click. And I actually never played uh, the Jurassic Park game. And from this chart, it looks like nobody did. I did. I quite liked it. it. It's pretty jank, but I love Jurassic Park, and it is a lot of fun. I mean, it's a Telltale game set in Jurassic Park. Uh, would you that's, say it's the first it time is. that they really set up the formula of uh, the Walking Dead-esque game? Or Oh, yeah. Because, oh, yeah. Because uh, uh, Back to the Future didn't have that. It still had the, uh, the heart of the point-and-click genre there. Uh, there was some... Uh, 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 inventory puzzles and that sort of thing. So it wasn't quite there yet. The Walking Dead, for me, was when they really changed things and also when they kind of lost me. 
But this also makes me wonder just the future of episodic gaming as well. Because I, th- uh, I think this is, um, you know, people are going to look at this and think, oh, I, I really shouldn't be buying episodic games anymore. Or at least I should say the enthusiast level because, you know, uh, they pulled The Walking Dead Dead Season. Yeah. I mean, I think that episodic gaming sh- will be okay. Um, you know, we've got Life is Strange uh, as, like, a n- the next big, like, I don't know, torch carrier or whatever for this style of game. Yeah, but um, Don't Nod is also there's some not other banking smaller ones. everything on dozens of games. <laughs> yeah. So, th- yeah, no, once again, true. that's comparing apples to pears. Yeah. But, you know, I think we'll we'll be okay. And also, Don't Nod isn't um, making just Life is Strange games. No, they're doing other things as well. But I do think, uh, yeah, I do think that there will still be episodic games, but I do think people are going to kind of be more leery of them now. But then again, yeah, I'm not exactly the best person to judge this because typically I waited till the season was over and then got it, usually on sale. So I was like the worst customer possible for Telltale <laughs> outside of just pirating and never uh, paying them. Yeah. Yeah, I never actually played episodic games episodically. <laughs> uh, to me, it doesn't make a lot of sense because, uh, especially for Telltale, that was something else that I think uh, bit them in the end, was that they never really were able to stick to a schedule. Yeah. I would be okay with episodic gaming if they stuck to the schedule, but I, they never do, so I just always wait Or if they Or if they did have a schedule, there would be, uh, what was uh, The Walking Dead? There was a one that was like two months out. It was like one month, one month, two months, two months, or something like that. I know the last yeah. one wasn't supposed to drop till December. Which uh, the, the Wolf Among Us really suffered from that too. Yeah, and it was kind of obvious in uh, playing that yeah, you know, what uh, episodes were kind of rushed because they were a bit rougher around the edges. I mean, they weren't terrible, but yeah, they uh, the the Walking Dead I think was well uh, a double edged sword for them. It makes me yeah. wonder what Telltale would have done if they never uh, had The Walking Dead. And this also makes it kind of obvious, you know, why uh, uh, Poker Night at the Inventory 2 uh, suddenly got pulled. They uh, didn't have the money to renew the licensing. Uh, that makes sense. I did not notice that. Uh, there was a bit of a talk about it uh, co- uh, a few weeks ago. I didn't put it on the docket because I didn't think it was going to be that interesting, but now it's kind of the harbinger of doom, huh? Yeah. Which, that's something else that, yeah, they never went back to the uh, uh, the Poker Night at the Inventory, which was an interesting little side series. Did you uh, did you ever play them? Poker Night at the Inventory? Yeah. yeah. I can't remember if you did or not, and I didn't ha- have Steam open. Uh, for those of you who haven't played it, it's a poker game, but it's more character-driven. Uh, and it's different game characters are kind of just getting together and having... Uh, uh, conversations together like you'll have uh, Heavy uh, in the first one with uh, Max from the same and Max series uh, and they're just saying they're playing poker and talking and it's actually quite enjoyable uh, Enjoyable. <laughs> it, it is but they just pulled that it without any warning whatsoever it's just gone and people were assuming that you know it may have been con- uh, contractual stuff you know not be able to do a sale or anything or even warn about it being gone but uh, maybe not. Yeah. Maybe not. Well. Well, we had a good um, talk about that. <laughs> we did indeed. We did indeed. But to be fair, there was also a lot I to think- talk about. And I have a feeling that, yo, know, I don't think we're completely done with this subject. I imagine that this is going to pop up again in the future. Especially with that lawsuit yeah. going on. Yeah, I suspect it will. But that will be a topic... For another day, or a topic to bring back another day. Yeah, so are you saying we'll remember this? <laughs> we will remember this, but Telltale might not. Yeah, they're like Woody. They're too drunk. Or at least their uh, yeah, board of directors are. Indeed. And with that, time to move on to the portion of the podcast where I go first as we wrap up this shortened episode. 
Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I this gotta is love the that. shortest episode we've ever specifically recorded. Yeah, I gotta love that uh, a short episode for us is still an hour and a half, huh? Indeed. Indeed. But if you want to find my things, you can do so by heading over to the YouTubes and searching for Gaming Psychologist. I've gotten a couple of new subscribers over there here recently, and I'm always happy to get a couple of new subscribers. Don't know if you're podcast listeners, but if you are, welcome. And if you're not, and you somehow find this... Uh, We're sorry. Because you're subscribed to my YouTube channel. Well, thanks. I appreciate it. And I hope you have a lovely day. If you want to follow me on Twitter, where you can see me tweet about all kinds of things. I was bitching about corporate culture this morning on there. (laughs) You can do so by following me at JMA4707. And uh, my brain just kind of died for a second because I'm not doing – I don't do Twitch really anymore. But if you want to be my friend on Steam, you can send a friend request to JArthur4707 on Steam. I accept all friend requests and do it enjoy chatting with the lovely people on there uh and i'm trying to be better about chatting in discord too so you can just follow the link to our discord it's like some random letters and numbers or something but yeah it's on the website indeed there's no like invite process or whatever just click the link join the server come chat don't be dicks um unless you're a big dick in which case yeah so don't be toad But you can be Bowsette all you like. I have to talk about that next week. <laughs> what about you, buddy? Well, first of all, if you wish to let them know exactly what episode of the podcast you're coming from, the password for this week is Power Bear. Power Bear. Yeah, <laughs> Power Bear. Uh, it was my favorite cutscene, like I say. Just a dramatic cut to just this impassive bear. <laughs> nice. Uh, well... Uh, for my stuff, uh, YouTube is still kind of coasting along. I need to get uh, set down and record some stuff because I'm out of stuff for RimWorld. I'm going to record that probably tomorrow uh, afternoon. Uh, been meaning to record the other thing I've been working on. Uh, and, well, Spin Tires is still going on. Still on the same map. <laughs> uh, yeah. Indeed. Yeah, we're going to have to talk about that. Uh, because, yeah, Road Trip is getting a little old. Uh, uh, and the Sunday Sampler is kind of in trouble because just key mailers being dicks. I'm still pending, by the way, after having my accreditation pulled three weeks ago, four weeks ago now, just randomly. So there's been no review keys to really power the Sunday Sampler. And uh, I did a one Steam Roulette, I did a second one, and I just was not happy with it. I... Got Sniper Elite and it. Oh, the pacing on that game uh, on the first couple of missions just sucks. And I love how you're very quiet and just you know, probably sitting there nodding. Or, or preparing for Star Wars. Yep. Get out of my head. Because <laughs> I am sitting here nodding. What can I say? I can only take so many jump cuts. Which is probably why I don't like uh, <laughs> watching a lot of YouTubers, actually. <laughs> so many jump cuts. But if you wish to watch a YouTuber like myself, you could do so at Gaming with Caffeine Rage on the YouTubes. I do a stream occasionally on Twitch, uh, Caffeine underscore Rage there. I need to actually stream a little bit more. I am working on a little project over there uh, to help diversify the channel. I've been playing Hollow Knight, and I hit a boss that I absolutely loathe. So I want to have a secondary game. And I'm pretty much all set on it i just need to do a little bit more testing because i don't want things to break too quickly what can i say i bought things to uh, br- uh the breaking point then i dial it back a couple notches and i'm good to go i'm in the testing phase right now or you can just see me t- uh tweet over on well the twitter because that's where you tweet right uh Gaming Indeed. with CR. I was actually bitching about Pandora being very, very clingy to me lately. <laughs> it seems like every day there's some sort of message from uh, Pandora. Hey, have, uh, do you remember this channel? You used to really like this channel. Why, why aren't you listening to my channels anymore? Uh, uh, it's it's a little sad, actually. They just miss you. Well, uh, they don't have as good a quality as uh, Amazon Music. Going to Amazon Music, then going back to Pandora, everything sounds so buddy. And I'm not an audiophile, mostly. I mean, granted, I have my psychotic fucking hatreds when it comes to audio production, but that's more audio production, not, you know, 
having uh, $2,000 audio cables to be able to get the uh, best bits, you know? The highest yeah. quality uh, numbers and uh, ones and zeros, you know? Uh, but uh, speaking of uh, high quality uh, ones and zeros, you can find those over on our Podbean account, podbean.com slash VGL podcast. Or did I screw that up? <laughs> you got that back. Yeah, I got it back. Podcast well, 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 I, was, I was scrolling up and I went right past it. Uh, VGL podcast, uh, dot podbean.com that has our RSS feed links to the discord. If you want us to join us in discord, well, you can catch us on iTunes, Google play, uh, Spotify, uh, all those fun places, which it, all these fun places are paid for by our Patreon, patreon.com slash VGL podcast. Or you could just email us, uh, VGL podcast at gmail.com with your letters, voicemails, game related topics, your audio letters for the game club, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, or just tweet us, uh, <laughs> random things at VGL podcast. I'm sure Jared would love to get some bow set pictures, right? Oh yeah. I've already gotten some. <laughs> Thanks Jim. Yeah. Uh, appreciate yeah, it. The internet's gone a little crazy. It's kind of funny. I originally Toadette was supposed to be a thing and then suddenly everybody kind of uh, dropped Toad for some reason. And no, I'm not joking. Uh, people are trying to make Toadette a thing, uh, like last week. <laughs> and, yeah, just Google Bowsette. You'll find. Don't do it if you're at work and you're worried about losing your job. <laughs> so much porn. Normally, I would have just looked at it when Jim sent it to me, but I was sitting in this all day training today <laughs> with like 30 people. I'm like, I really want to look at this, but I'm just, I just don't want to risk it. I would love to hear you try to explain why you're looking at that. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's funny that you should ask. <laughs> oh, that, that that would have been just hilarious. But now, uh, have you seen uh, Prince Koopa? No, I don't think so. Uh, it's essentially the reverse of Bowsette. Okay. So it's Princess Peach with the Bowser shell. I've only seen a couple of them, but yeah, uh, things are getting a little crazy over Nintendo and they're probably thinking, what the fuck happened? <laughs> because Nintendo has always tried to have this really squeaky clean image and now you're searching Prince Koopa, aren't you? Yeah. Some old stuff. I, I think actually... I, I, maybe I'm uh, misremembering the name. Uh, I saw a couple of, uh, uh, now, now, how do we refer to these? Because is it him and her or her and him or because they're both uh, gender bent at this point? I don't know. Yes. No. Maybe. That that covers all of our bases. And also covering all our bases. Our intro and outro music is on the ground by Kevin McLeod. And you can find his work at Computech.com and As always, as his lovely music starts to roll across my voice. Well bye now. Oh, see ya. Bye.